Identity matters. First of all, identity is a social construct. There is a direct correlation between Israel, which is Abraham's seed, and those which are Christ. With cheap substitutes, that's that's what sin is. Sin is a cheap substitute. Those temptations are cheap substitutes. Grace's function is a shield of protection, a protective force, because there's something on the inside of us that we have that the Most High is invested in. We just open our hearts to God and ask Him to just clean us up, fix us up. Thy will must be done. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> Shabbat, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Uh, I was just um, pondering over us coming in a little bit late. Just wanted to see. We want. We 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 were testing y'all to see how strong your faith is. If we're late by thirty seconds, with y'all leave. <laughs> no, no, not not our family. Not, not at all. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. We uh we had something that was going on there that, that caused us to be a few seconds late. Normally we're pretty much straight up on the on the dot, straight on the nose, and uh, we we we're, we're thankful for um uh, the ruach giving us a pre preparation spirit to make sure that we're always here for you, one way or the other, uh, whether it be two or three of us, we are always going to try to be here. Um. Uh, I don't think I don't think we've missed uh, a Shabbat since we started, huh, son? This is gonna be our third year this coming this summer. Uh, I don't least, think we've missed. No, I don't think we missed one. Oh, so. one well, way or the other, we've been able. You know what? I take that back. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I believe it was two summers ago. We took a little sabbatical, if you remember. We were getting some administrative things together. Oh yeah, yeah. That, okay, yeah, you're so, right. So that yeah. was a bit of like a, maybe like a four week or so. Yeah, that was that first year, right? Uh, I, I, I don't recall year. which year if it was the first or yeah. second, but I remember that. Yeah. But that was it. Other than that, yeah, right. Most has been right. allowed us to be, you know. But that's still that's still a pretty good track record, though. Yeah, you know, I'll praise the most for, for growing ministry. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Yeah. Uh, but we're so thankful to have you all here. Um, uh, some of you been with, been us from been with us from the beginning, and we're thankful for every one of you, whether you were here from the beginning or not. Uh, God is good; He knows who He wants um, to be here. He knows who He's called, um, and I'm continuing to challenge you to come up and share with us when we put in the link because. God has placed something in it, just like in that the, the intro. Grace, Grace's function is to protect. He's protecting something that's inside of us. Um, and if you've got something inside of you, um, you ought to be able to share that. You ought to be able to let others know what's going on with you. <laughs> and so we invite you to be uh, to come up and share with us. We're going to have our special guest. Uh, he's going to be back with us again today. Uh, so I'll let Kenneth go ahead and get us, uh, uh, give us an introduction, give us open prayer, and we'll go ahead and get going. Amen. Amen. Again, family, it's great to see uh, everyone that's coming in. Uh, we appreciate each and every one of you, and thank you for being here on this shot by day. We give all praise to the Most High Yah, and in just a moment, we're going to ask for His Spirit, the Set Apart Spirit, the Holy Spirit, to come in and abide in our presence and uh, and really take control of uh, the conversation because the Most High is bringing order. And that's what this conversation is about, that this is a this is a this is a conversation about the Most High's order opposed to man's desire, mm -hmm. even when it comes to the way we worship and the way we make connection to him. Uh, you know, and give him glory, give him praise through these music outlets and uh, various outlets of worship. You know, it's about uh, his order, his divine um, uh, uh, layout for how he desires to be worshiped and praised. And so we're grateful for uh, our, our guest who was with us last week, uh, Brother Cedric, uh, who uh, provided a lot of powerful insight into the experience of a worship leader, uh, the experience of someone who has uh, many years 
uh, in uh, the worship space in uh, you know church settings and uh, different things like that. Uh, leader of a, uh, a worship band and just just grateful for uh, for his insight. And even today, as we follow up, looking forward to hearing more from you, the people, those that are here with us live. And even if you're on demand, drop because we've been seeing some comments that have been dropped uh, on demand as well. So feel free to continue to drop your comments if you're watching on demand and share with us in the comment section uh, during the live stream. So we just are grateful to be here and look forward to starting this conversation uh, once again today. This is part two as we look at how worship was and how it is today and get, gain an insight so that we can uh, worship the Father and Spirit and in truth. So let's uh, let's prepare to bow our heads and bow our hearts and then uh, we'll bring up our brother uh, to start this conversation and, uh, and just allow the Ruach to flow through us. So if you're able to, bow your heads, bow your hearts, and let's uh, let's welcome the King into this space. So, first of all, we just come humbly before you, Father, thanking you for another opportunity to gather on this shot by day. We don't take it for granted. We appreciate so much the opportunity to have this platform, the opportunity to share with each other, to encourage each other, to edify one another, to sharpen each other, just like iron sharpens iron. As uh, you called us to gather on your day, on your set apart day, this seventh day of the week, this Shabbat day, we ask that you be glorified, you be honored, every word, every deed, anything that comes across this stream, we just pray that you would be our, our, uh, our defense, you would be our shield and buckler, and that you would quench the fiery darts uh, that if the enemy would, in any way, shape, or form, think he would have any sort of domain here, he is bound and cast down in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach right now in this stream. And we just thank you for the conversation. We thank you for those that are here in the live. I pray a blessing over every family that's represented, every soul that is in this stream right now. I just pray and, and plead your blood, Yeshua HaMashiach, over all, that your blood will drip all over this stream and that your set up our spirit will shine a light of truth uh, on all things as we test spirits and as we hold fast to what is good, Father, I just ask that you will continue to do the drawing as we continue to lift your name high. We love you, we honor you, and we worship you with our obedience today, our obedience to your Shabbat. We are setting this apart as holy and believing that this conversation is going to be enlightening and enriching for all on demand and live. We love you, Father, and thank you once again for 2444 Ready Ministries and all of the uh, networks and opportunities that you are connecting us to, Father. We're so blessed, so blessed to call ourselves one of your own, one of your children, and we thank you for the covenant blessing of being a part of your family, Israel. These things we pray in the name of your son, Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. So be it. Amen. Well, so if you... If you haven't already done so, family, hit that like button, hit that like button, hit that share button. Let others know that we're having this conversation around uh, music, around worship and things that we see in the here and now. And as we look into the scriptures to see how things were. So Amen. Here to Amen. Do that. And, uh, it's a great support for the stream. Great to see everybody coming into the live. We see you. Shabbat Shalom. We see each and every one of you that are coming. And remember, if you don't comment uh, and you're watching, we don't know you're here. So just let us yeah. know just so that we can love on you. Amen. Hey, uh, Shabbat Shalom to you. So uh, our actually, we're going on. We're going into our fourth year, son, because we started during the pandemic. That's one good thing that came out of the pandemic. Huh. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, yeah, this is. Yeah, this mm -hmm. is here for. So let's uh let's get ready to open up this conversation. So uh we're gonna prepare to bring up our uh, our brother said and uh, allow him to say a few words, especially if, for those that did not get a chance to see him or be able to be a part of the uh the stream on last week. So we're gonna prepare to bring our brother up and uh and get this conversation going. Amen. Oh, praise his brother, brother Shabbat Seth. Shalom, brother Seth. Shalom Shabbat to you. Good to see you once again. Good to see you. It's, it's such, a, such a pleasure to worship with you all this morning. Shabbat shalom. Amen. Amen. 
man, it's great to have you here with us, brother. It really is. Again, uh, man, we were so encouraged by your testimonies on last week. We were so encouraged by the conversation that uh, that your experiences were sparking in the chat and even some comments that we received, um, you know, even after the stream, those that were, you know, watching on on demand and things like that. So we just appreciate you just coming and sharing your experience and, you know, ministering through the word of your testimony. So thank you, thank you for that. And uh, yeah. as we get ready to get back to this conversation, we're going to do just like we did last week, brother said, as, as different questions come up that are with in the flow of the conversation, we'll put those up on the screen for you to to see and uh, comment or react to, and we'll just kind of let uh, let let the spirit flow in that way. So, if you would, brother, say before we get going, um, just kind of if you would just kind of quickly reintroduce yourself to the people, kind of give them a little bit about your background. Those of you that might not have been here last week uh, before we get into the conversation, so I'll turn it over to you, brother Cedric. Excellent. Yes. Yes. Um, so thank you once again for having me. I'm uh, Brother Cedric Bates, and I am a native Houstonian here. Um, I was uh, raised uh, in the Church of God in Christ, and I uh, started playing uh, as a musician in the Church of God in Christ six years old. Uh, I played every week in church, uh, in different churches, different settings, from the time I was six years old to the time I was 36 years old. Uh, I'm 40 years old now. And I spend uh, I get to spend a lot of time with my with my wife and my uh, three kids now. Uh, but the breadth of experience that God blessed me with um, as a, as a musician has been really, really great. Uh, God's given me a lot of different uh, perspectives. Uh, I'm also um, um, a medical professional. Um, I work in uh, as a medical consultant in, in, a, in the pharmaceutical industry. So uh, I've had the privilege of um, really having a kind of diverse uh, viewpoint. I, I've gotten to see um, church and worship from the standpoint of being a musician, also church and worship from the standpoint of being, um, you know, a young professional and up and coming professional who can see what influences, um, you know, might not be necessary and to see what structure might be necessary and so on. So it's, um, God just has just blessed me with a real, real breadth of it uh, of experience to uh, to understand and now to uh, sort of explain uh, explain the life and roles of a of a musician in the church as best I can. Um, and I'm a my primary instrument is um, uh, drums. Um, I also play um, a little bit of keyboard, uh, a little bit of uh, saxophone. I wish I was uh, I wish I had a beautiful voice of of my dear brother. Uh, uh, Ken Caldwell, um, but I, um, but that is my, that's my musical uh, and some of my professional and family background. So are you sharing with us that you, that he's been in your band or with your group singing? I have a, uh, yeah, he, he has, he's uh so, okay. so, uh, you know, uh, that's new to me. Ken Caldwell <laughs> and I, we, um, so we actually, um, I mean, we've known each other for such a long time, uh, but, he and my wife actually went to a uh, high school together, the Bakey High School for Health Professions. And uh, he sang there. So when my wife and I started dating about, uh, oh, my goodness, about 20 years ago, we we, we met each other at, uh, as freshmen at Texas A&M uh, back in 2001. We started dating in uh, 2004. So since around 2004, yep, I've known... Uh, I've known uh, Ken Caldwell, so okay. uh, yeah, and I've, uh, I've I've got to hear him sing in some of his musical uh, talent since then. So okay. the rest of it since All then, right. yes, sir. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, that 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 was uh, that was enlightening. Um, I've heard him speak, man. I have heard him sing, but you know, it wasn't like he was actually singing. You know, yeah. to be um, uh, to be a leader in uh, leading a song or anything. He was just participating with a group. Yes, and yes. so I didn't. I didn't realize that he um, that he had that voice. Oh, absolutely! Not, not surprising though. Not surprised because the brothers the brothers full of talent. <laughs> very, very talented. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> Thanks brothers, for sharing. I'm, Thanks for sharing. I do apologize, and fam, I apologize. I was, uh, and this is one of the reasons why we had a bit of a delay this morning. I've been having some connectivity issues uh, that prayer for the Most High will help us to. Work through during this stream, but I appreciate your patience. I think I'm back. I'm in a different location, so hopefully we can hold hold steady. So, uh, so you all pray 
that uh, that we would hold steady <laughs> with this connection. Amen. But um, but yeah, so so with that being said, uh, brother said, thank you so much for sharing a little bit about your background. And what I'd like to do right now is kind of address some things that were brought up last week, uh, a few questions that we didn't quite get a chance to get to. There was a lot of comments um, that were obviously dropped during the stream, but there was a couple of questions that I think really uh, kind of culminate some things that we might not have been able to touch on during the last week's stream that I'd like to start with uh, today. So let me go ahead and put this up and kind of uh, allow you to respond to uh, this question first. So uh, the question on, on, on the screen is, and let's see, let me make sure this is the question. This is it. Uh, so the question here is, have you often run into musical Pharisees? And just asking if you can kind of respond to that. So as someone who's been in this space for years, I think if I recall you saying last year, like since you were very young, uh, just around instrumentation and music and things like that. And throughout the course of your experience as you've grown and the most high has sharpened your gift and put you in spaces and around different circles, uh, musical circles, circles, worship circles, have you run into musical Pharisees? And what are some of those kind of attributes that you would advise those of us that are desiring? Yeah, and that's a good question. We're going to break that down because we got a question on the floor. Mm -hmm. Hey, what is a musical Pharisee? <laughs> mm -hmm. So we're going to address that uh, before we, uh, and let's go ahead and address that now before we even turn it over to Brother Said to respond. Yeah. So you recall, the Pharisees were a religious sect during Yeshua's time uh, and even going back uh, hundreds of years before that were Torah observant, uh, but they were really focused on traditions as opposed to the truth of the written word. They were very uh, open about being seen, uh, wasn't necessarily about the truth or the true Ruach or the true spirit behind what the father was trying to usher in. And they were also fighting against Yeshua in his true spirit that was coming from the father. And they were very self-seeking in the things that they were doing. They were saying good things. They were saying one thing uh, as they were leading the people, but they were doing something completely different. And so this is a spirit that is not after the most high, even though it appears it might be uh, in the likeness of, uh, and this is why it's so important to be able to discern and recognize spirits, you know? So that's what we mean when we say a musical Pharisee, someone who's, who is coming into the space, not so much to give glory and bring the people closer to the most high, but more so for that, that, for that self-seeking uh, desires and, and, and trying to boost up and build up oneself or making sure or using, uh, even worse, using the people as a means to get to a place that has maybe a selfish end. So I hope that clarifies kind of what we're talking about, kind of that that Pharisee spirit. So, uh, Brother Cedric, if you would, you know, just share share your, your thoughts about, about this. This was a, a question that was directly asked from uh, last week's stream. Certainly, certainly. So great question. And thank you so much for the, you know, the great uh, explanation. Yes, uh, you do run into musical Pharisees. How often? Um, it just depends on how much, uh, you know, you do music or how much you uh, play, or how many different environments you're in. Um, I, I won't, I haven't, you know, seen like musical Pharisees in every environment that I've been in. But uh, it's fascinating to call the musical, musical Pharisees because a lot of it stems from uh, Pharisees and leadership in the church. Um, as many of us as musicians, we start out um, and we develop our gift and start out with very pure intentions. And you get you get into really the joy and the elation and really the um, um, you're really enthusiastic about getting to play music it is fulfilling and then um i think the real pivot point comes when uh people have um impure financial intentions um money 
always seems to be the pivot point. Uh, so you get people that have a gift in music and, and, and they come and they play and they use that gift. Um, but they're just using it for money. You know, they're not using it to, um, to really usher people into the presence of God. They're not really using it to improve people's lives and to encourage people. Um, but, you know, it really depends on, I guess, the system that they have available um, for that financial gain. Um, because, um, I have seen musicians that come in and they, you know, they utilize their gift and, and as a Pharisee, I think they really want to draw people to themselves and not to Christ. Um, the reason that they want to draw people to themselves is so that they can make merchandise of the people so that they can, you know, get some money from them. I've seen musicians that, you know, they're borrowing money from people in the church or they, you know, they have inappropriate relationships um, with, um, you know, uh, the women in the church. And it's not it's not kind of a one off thing. You know, you see a pattern of people going from church to church and, you know, they might have uh, eight, eight different, uh, you know, eight, uh, well, the, the eight different baby mamas, if you will. And in and, and, and you can trace it from, the you know, the four or five different ministries they've come from. Um, but I think what happens is, um, they, and they see something in church leadership and some point in their lives, uh, when you see leaders that are no longer acting, uh, with the fear of Christ and no longer acting in the best interests of the people, but just trying to gain financially. And, you know, musicians in many cases see that there's a hierarchy, a spiritual hierarchy, if you will, in the church, because when we uh, join churches and play in ministries, we know that we're submitting to uh, the spirit of the house. We know that we're submitting to the leadership in the church to help to flow, um, to open people up for what they would uh, deposit. Hopefully it's being led uh, by the most high. Hopefully it's being led by Christ, you know. Um, but sometimes we see the leadership is only about money, you know, and then that that, you know, that'll have us saying, OK, I'm not going to go next Sunday. I'll hopeful thinking that I'm doing this spiritual work. I'm just using this gift um, so that the leadership can do what they're going to do um, so that I can get my check and keep moving. So uh, but it, it a lot of musicians will. So, it, you know, it goes, it really goes both ways because, you know, those musical fantasies are created. They're not born, uh, I would say. And it's because you see leadership that, or I was, um, I was telling Ken Caldwell um, uh, last week that it's because we have a lot of those back office um, conversations. And, you know, in the back office conversations, many times it's that people are, um, you know, they're praying to get ready for service or they're giving the order of service and saying, okay, this is going to be different when I have this guest. They're going to come and sit right here. So we're going to play this intro when they come in or we're going to cut this song short, X, Y, Z. But in some of those conversations, it's like, hey, let's get out there and get this money. Hmm. And that's coming from the pastor of the church, you know? Oh. And, that, and that happens more... Now that doesn't happen the majority of the time. It's not the majority of churches. It might be, uh, you know, ten percent or less of the time. Sometimes it's felt, and it's not as explicitly stated. Sometimes it's explicitly stated. So, you know, as a musician, you say, "Man, this is all just smoke and mirrors." You know, brother said you just you, you were hinting on a number of things there, things that are happening behind the scenes that we would never have access to. Those of us that are you know, uh, a part of the experience, I guess, for lack of a better term. We, we don't see these things that are happening behind. But you mentioned something that I think is this is a really good place to bring this out. And so one thing that we do here at 2444 Ready is we we when we see a pattern or a theme, we try to go back into the Hebrew and look at the Hebraic function of it in the scriptures. And so you talked about how when you go into a 
worship space, a church or whatever the case may be, that you have to submit to the authority of that house, mm -hmm. right? <clears throat> so the musicians are expected to submit to the authority of that particular house because there is a spirit that is driving that house. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's really important that we be able to discern those spirits. But let's kind of go and look for just a moment uh, as we continue this conversation at this whole idea of what a spirit is. And we've talked about this before, but I wanna, I wanna bring this back up because I think it's something that we all can, um, can gain from because there is family, brothers and sisters, there is a spirit that is driving every music or worship experience. When you don't, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm didn't mean to interrupt, mean to interrupt you at that moment, but I was trying to make sure you know that when they, when you're done, we'll go to a question in the chat. No problem, no problem. So I want to I want to talk about just for a moment why it's so important to understand the function of spirits. So just for a second, let's look at the or what the word spirit or what we commonly hear in Hebrew as ruach. What is a ruach at its Hebraic function? As a spirit is 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 crafted, right? Uh, you know the spirits come. The the, the, the Most High is the uh, is the generator of, of spirits, and but then spirits become can become corrupt, as we see what happened to Lucifer, right? But every spirit is functioning under this notion. And it's written in the way the letters are broken down. So as we know, Hebrew read from right to left, the first letter being the resh, which signifies the head or an authority figure or something that is at, is at the forefront or first. And then that last Hebraic letter, which is the het, which signifies something that is, that is protected or covered or uh, separated or uh, or fenced in. And so understanding that the whole function, the whole purpose of spirits are to come in and first of all, take control. So family, understand spirits come to take control. They don't come to take the back seat. So when a spirit comes in, a spirit comes in to take control. So that's why it's so important to know what spirit you're under, right? Even, the, even within a musical, um, a musical setting or musical, you need to know what spirit you're under because that spirit is coming to take control of those that are within that domain. That spirit is not coming to share space. That spirit is not coming to take a back seat, coming to take control. So to be the head or the authority and understand that it is meant to separate spirits come into an environment or when, a, when you engage with a spirit, it's going to separate you from whatever spirit you might be under. Hmm. Okay, so listen, I'm gonna say it again. Remember, there's two aspects to the term Ruach. There's the authority aspect, and that's the separation aspect. A Ruach is, is coming in and going to come into your space. So it's gonna engage with you, first of all, to take control, okay, to be the authority, to be in the driver's seat, and to separate you from whatever track you were on and lead you down the track that that spirit is mm -hmm. is is ordered to move in in the direction that that spirit is moved in. So that's really important when you said that about about when you come in. We know as worship leaders that we're going to be under the spirit of the authority of that church. That's so aligned with 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 the the whole aspect and the whole concept behind a mm -hmm. rule. So just wanted to bring that out because that, that's something I'm in. And please, Brother Cedric, you can even respond to even this Hebraic breakdown. If this is something that, that you're familiar with uh, or maybe you you uh, you have or have not uh, been engaged with this. But what, what are your thoughts behind that, that part about even when it comes to worship and the spirits that drive worship and how strong they are, how powerful they are? Because these things are authoritarian. They are if you want to call it dominant, if you want to call it alpha, they come in. They're not coming in. Uh, like a lightweight, they're coming in like a heavyweight to take control. Yes, yes, you know, I, I absolutely love this uh, explanation. Um, you know, of the rule, and um, you know, I love what you said in that. You know, the spirit is not coming to 
partake is coming to take over is coming to dominate and um you know as as musicians get more mature and uh you know if if we lend ourselves to learning more about the spirit of god or spirit of a house or the spiritual intentions um then we recognize that a lot of what we do is uh spirit work because you're you're opening you're trying to open people up uh for the message and you hope that it's you know, a good message. You hope that it's, uh, that it's a message, you know, in the right direction and so on. Um, I often, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm so thankful that God is God and that God knows our, our heart conditions because, um, you know, the, the individual participating, you don't know what level of accountability you'll be ever be held to for what's deposited, you know, into the people. Um, but you participate at the best of your, ability you know and 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 at the at the best of uh with the best intentions you 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 should always use your gift with the best intentions and um you know you, when you start out as a musician you really don't know you're not looking at the effects of music on the people you just know that the effect that music has on you uh you just know how it makes you feel how it makes you you know happy how it how it how it opens up, you know, a warmth and a light inside of you. And then um, as you grow, you figure out how that light really coincides um, with the worship experience. Um, you can play a lot of different places for a lot of different reasons. I, you know, um, to me, there's nothing more gratifying uh, than playing for the creator. Um, and you just hope that the spirit of the house lines up and, uh, and you hope that in your spiritual maturity, you hope that you can play in situations where um, it's a good thing that you're delivering to the people. Um, similarly to my um, to my work in pharmaceuticals, sometimes you um, you might sell drugs that you know you didn't create the drug, and you didn't you know you didn't um, you didn't create the science behind the drug, and so on. There are some drugs that are more beneficial to people than others. Um, but you have to have a career, you know, you, you have to, you know, you have to have a career, make money and, and raise a family. And so you hope that the drug that you sell is the best for the people. You hope that the drug that you sell is the one that's going to have the, you know, give the best outcomes, uh, to the patients and so on, but you're not the manufacturer. So you cannot always control that. And so as a musician and maturing, you realize that people don't just get saved from uh from well people's entire spiritual existence is not to hear drums it's not to hear organ it's not to hear guitar it's uh it's to it's to lighten their hearts for the message that's going to be deposited into their heart so you really hope that it's better you hope that it's good but you know i've seen i've seen uh I've seen leaders uh, um, and, and church leaders go into, you know, they say, oh, whenever you go into another house of worship, this is what you say to, uh, you know, you take dominion over the, you know, over the house. So that if, if anything there is impure and X, Y, Z, you take dominion over it. Um, is it that they're doing it because things are impure or are they, are they saying that because they want to deposit what they want to deposit into the people so that they can get them excited quickly and so that the people can give them money you know it's a uh, money is so often the pivot um i think people look at god and say well god doesn't need our money but we need money here on earth so let me manipulate things a little bit <laughs> so that people will give more you know more money money i, I just money has just always been been the pivot point you know, in everything you're saying are, are things that, again, for for those that are experiencing worship, I think it's important for you to that you're laying, kind of giving us a true look as to what the conversations that are being had and the intentions that are being had behind the scenes. This is why it's so important for us to be under the set apart spirit and to be a discerner of spirits, particularly when it comes to worship spaces. Like that is so important or music that we're listening to. We have to know, and, and it's not something that we know on our own knowledge and our own wisdom, having the set apart Ruach who can help us differentiate and discern. 
is so important. But dad, I'm gonna turn it over to you because you said that was a, a question that we wanted to bring up for brother said for the conversation. Yes. All right. This one is directly um, uh, to you, said. So if you would, uh, uh, it says, said, do you listen to music objectively or emotionally and why? And I love that question. Uh, I listen to music first objectively. And uh, if if the music touches me emotionally, then, then I pay more attention to it. Um, because it um, the music that I listen for and the chords and stuff like that, that, that move me and that, that stir me uh, spiritually and emotionally, they're, they're kind of complex. They're kind of complex. Um, so if, and I look for the message in the music as well, um, because sometimes those chords can serve as a vector for me. And, um, you know, my wife and kids will tell you, and anybody who's uh, around me, normally they'll tell you if I, man, if I find a song that I like, if I find, um, if I find chord structures and stuff like that, that I like, man, I'll just listen to it on repeat and chew on it. And, you know, um, because it ministers to me in a way, um, even without words, but first objectively, because every style of music is not, um, I don't immediately take in a message in every style of music. And we have to be very careful about that, especially, uh, especially as black folks, because, it seems like um, you know uh, a good beat or a good um, and a good bass line and so on. They move us, but and and um, but the messages behind those are just horrible. You know, horrible, horrible, terrible messages. Um, but we're encouraged by the beat and we're moved, you know, by the beat and the rhythm. So I, I make sure to listen first objectively and if it stirs me emotionally um first thing i do is I, I try to figure out why it stirs me emotionally and then i listen to the message under that because sometimes i have music uh, like chords will stir me emotionally but there's a you know a horrible message under it and and i say a horrible message or anything that that separates you from uh from the promises i feel uh you know from the promises of god from that from that health, from that peace of mind, from that, um, you know, um, you know, it says, uh, Bob says, above all, I wish that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. So I try to weed out anything or I, I weed out everything that's against, you know, prospering and being in health, even as my soul prospers and even as my family soul prospers. And I'm very, I'm careful about what they seem to. I have uh, my wife and I have a 14 year old daughter, um, um, 10 year old son, six year old daughter, and they love music and they're especially uh, receptive to music. We have instruments everywhere in our house, you know, anything that they want to play, whether it's a horn or drums, you know, they have access to it. They absolutely love music. But when they come home singing a lot of the songs that they hear on uh and not necessarily fashion, social media, TikTok, or anything like that, because if you there are ways to utilize those technologies to be be effective and to make you an effective, um, even kingdom citizen in this world. Um, when they're coming home and singing the trendiest thing, I have to make sure that they're not internalizing those things, you know, um, internalizing those messages. Um, so I have to teach them uh to listen to music objectively mm -hmm. um but it's the it's the rhythm that stirs us it's the and we've all seen it right like uh you know you're at a family reunion or something like that and certain songs come on with uh terrible messages i mean it, I, I found it more recently that, that the messages are more terrible and they're demeaning to people that are meaning to i mean people have seen the songs and demean themselves you know, uh, just because yeah. the, just because it's a good beat. Yeah, <laughs> you, you, you're hitting on on powerful truths, man. We will, and this is why understanding that all worship, all music is under a spirit because you could be being led, and you could be damning or even condemning yourself. Mm. All, but but, but the, to your point, the rhythm of it and the Beat will will have you almost under a trance. Trance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
that, yeah. that kind of leads in uh, segue into the uh, second question we have for him today, Kenneth. So why don't you bring that up and then we'll come back to a couple questions in the chat. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let me bring up that question. <clears throat> so second question we have on the floor is here. So, bro, Cedric, <clears throat> in your experience, has the style or genre of musical play uh, uh, of the music play a role in authenticity of worship? So this question was brought forth last week because obviously many cultures have different styles that are preferable or uh, in, in that culture or dominate that particular culture. So does the style or genre of the music play a role in worship authenticity? Now, this is a this is this is one that because in and I'm gonna say where it came from. So there were conversations in the chat last week about rap as it pertains to worship in other genres as it pertains uh, to, to to worship. Does the genre or musical style play a role in the in, in the authenticity authenticity of worship in your experience? Yes, uh, great question. I it, I think that it plays. It plays. It's 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 about the authenticity to a person, or to the people. It's to to the culture, right? Because when um, music, you start to be conditioned by music from the time that you're small, um, from times you're very little, and you attach emotions to the music, you attach experiences to the music, and so, you know, during the holidays, there's a certain type of music. I was played in my house from the time that I was a uh, from the from the time I was a child, or every uh, every Sunday at the church, we go back to my grandparents' house, and they would play these um, they would play these uh, videotapes, VCR tapes uh, with Mississippi Mass Choir, and uh, you know, and uh, Thompson Community Singers, and and um, so that became part of my um, vocabulary very young. So when I hear anything similar, it stirs me. If I grown up in a Caribbean household, then I would have heard music with uh, maybe there was more calypso and, and with worship music um, and praise music. If I was, um, you know, I do have West African roots, you know, um, but I'm, I'm, you know, born and raised here in Houston, Texas. But if I was, you know, raised in West in a, in a West African household. I would I would be stirred by different rhythms. I'd be stirred by different and, and same thing if uh you know Cuban Afro Cuban um household or um you know it, it really depends on the individual. So I I don't know if I would if I can say that it's more that anything's more authentic uh than the next. It's about the message at that point. Uh and it's and it's 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 about how effective that vector is in leading people to Christ and in aligning people with Christ and what, what um, you know, what the most high is about aligning people with the most high. So um, I haven't seen any forms of music that are, um, and I was telling, so it, and when you look at like music in the Eastern context, like our scales are different, you know, our scale structures are different. So things chords that elicit happy emotions in us they can elicit sorrowful sorrowful emotions in other cultures wow and so, uh, hold, on, probably... so not, hold on you just can't run by so <laughs> I, I, i'll be on i'll be on ken carwell about this so they be dropping jewels and just trying to run on no sir you're gonna rewind back for a second and make sure we all heard that so you, you just said that in certain cultures i want to make sure that we hear this family this is really really important for someone who is experienced in this in, in in this gift of music and has lots of experience, you just said, said, and I want you to go go in on the detail here because that's really yeah. um, that's that that is a that is a major point of understanding that may might need to be clarified with those of us that are not only here, but also those that will watch on demand. We, this is why we gotta man hit that like button. Hit that, that, put it up, man. Hit that like button. Hit that share, y'all. Come on. This, this is this is great conversation in context, in, in, in a historical and biblical context. So you just said, said that in Eastern cultures, which many of us have little to no experience in, right? 
certain chords and scales hit the soul differently. Mm -hmm. So can you can yeah. talk about that? But because we would we would think that anything that we hear, the way we experience it, that's the way everyone around the world would engage and experience that particular scale or chord when it comes to uh, to, to music. But talk a little bit more about that. That was really good, Sid. Certainly, certainly, yes. And uh, you know, thank you. And like it, um, I've had the privilege to to study music quite a bit. I um, when I was at um, undergrad at Texas A&M, um, we did not have an instrumental music program, but um, but they did have a. I came like two classes away from a music minor, so it caused me to study like digital music and music from like 19th century masters, symphony, and stuff like that. So from an academic standpoint. Uh, yeah, you, you look at music and different scale structures from other cultures, East, Eastern cultures, specifically, specifically Asian cultures. Um, and, you know, there are a lot of different, um, you know, more more um, religions and so on in the Asian context. And we're all aware of not just the largest uh religions there in, you know, China, Japan and so on. But there are certain chords that, you know, we play here in the u.s and in western music that elicit happiness in us you know generally if you play a major scale you're talking about happiness if you try if you play a minor scale uh you're you know you influence you infuse more emotion the blue scale automatically uh influence like infuses uh some emotion and from a blue step I, I forgot to mention i'm a descendant of uh W.C. Handy, who's the father of the blues, my uh, my grandmother who just passed away um, last year, Gertrude Handy. She lived to be Gertrude Shelley, but her uh, her maiden name is uh, Gertrude Handy. She's a niece, a great niece of his, and uh, she lived to be 100 years old. But yeah, he was the father of the blues, and that grew through his influence in uh, first the Baptist Church, then the Methodist Church, then on to uh, him creating the blues. Um, but Yes, there, there are certain cultures where you play a major scale or you play a combination of notes in a major scale. To them, that elicits sorrow. They play that as part of like their funeral rituals and so on. So if they ever heard that sound, you know, just kind of like uh, if we hear dun, 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 we're like, okay, that's that's a smith. What's, what's going on? What's going to happen? You know, um, it would be the equivalent of something like that, of like the failed clutch of circumstance if they hear certain chords in the eastern uh yeah in in certain types of eastern music so to your point just because we hear something uh a certain way and use something a certain way it doesn't mean that it's uh universally um, acknowledged that way and, and yeah. it doesn't mean that it's universally utilized that way now what is it and we also have to work to figure out what the original intention is of the spirit of god because you know you want to know what you want to know what pleases the most high and uh that earth put frequencies and vibrations you know i want to know what frequencies and vibrations please the most high that's what i want to play you know that's what i want to experience that's what i want to understand um but yes it's it's um we can't assume that because we use structures um and chords a certain way that it's received um everywhere the same way because it's not yeah uh you know kind of uh somebody yeah. came in late i've been trying to squeeze this question back in uh you had already expounded on it earlier but can you give a brief explanation of this question right I, here i had already I, I already responded to that in the chat oh okay good and then yeah. we have another question here you know i don't uh personally i don't have any that come to mind um that I could name that are like, you know, broadly folks that anybody would recognize. Oh, so and so, oh, don't don't ever listen to his music. He's just gonna try to, you know, convince you to give him more money anytime you listen to him on the radio or anything. You know, I don't have any one that comes to mind like that, but what happens from a mus musician standpoint is if you serve in ministry with certain folks, then you figure out that that's just, you know, what they're about day in, day out. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so it, it sounds like I said it's more of a fruit inspection. After you've been around this person more and more, and you start watching how they operate, what they say, what they do, it begins to 
to you know reveal you know the spirit by which they're they're operating certainly what certainly you, you get to see how people live <clears throat> after you guys leave and that you know you get to see how people act when it's time to pay people you get to see how they act when it's time to get paid it's always money is always a pivot point you know you get to see people's level of authenticity um you see what they do in front of the people and then you see what they do you know you see their character when nobody's watching and they they generally want to be surrounded by people that that aren't going to condemn them or that are more like them so if you have any you know leaders that are only about the money they want to be surrounded by musicians who are only about the money because then you can work for a common goal right it's uh it's still important to work toward a common goal whether or not that's a good goal so. okay i got another question uh here on the floor I, i'm pretty sure i mean we have to be discerning about everything that that you know that's out here because it's a spiritual warfare but uh i guess in music we need to have that discerning spirit too so and then we have somebody coming up let so me, we'll let you answer this question then we'll bring somebody else up and in, in, in before that that i i, I want to share something that's along the lines of this we'll definitely allow brother said to respond here and then i okay I'll share something sure. in, in scripture related to this question that's on the floor so you're going to go right now yeah, I, I, I can. And then uh, we can ask for the set if he would uh, respond to it as well. So we this have somebody in the waiting about, room also. Right. So the question is, how do you discern the spirit behind me? Well, one thing that, you know, we've we've talked about uh, over the years that we've had an opportunity to be in this particular platform is that if you want to know the uh, the spirit of the, of the, uh, the true intentions of of something, just go back to the origins of of that particular uh, entity and see the original function. Because functions can get warped, they can get uh, distorted, and all sorts of things. We see that happen all the time. That's where evil spirits come from. They are distorted and warped uh, spirits uh, that have uh, either uh, decided to separate or move in a different direction, as opposed to the direction of the Most High. But uh, as I was, you know, uh, you know, thinking about this topic of music, what uh, what the spirit led me to, and I'm going to ask those of you to have your Bibles. I'm going to actually put this up on the screen for you uh, so you can actually uh, see it. Um, <clears throat> it should be clear on your screens right now. This is Genesis and chapter four. And while he's doing that, said, if you would, you have light in your background, so if you could turn your camera a little bit, if it's possible, to take some of that light out of your out of your camera. Yes, sir. We'll do. So this is Genesis chapter four, family. Um, and when you go back, uh, the word uh, declares some specific things as regarding the origin of, of, of music or instrumentation and things like that. So uh, what I have on the screen for you, family, is uh, Genesis chapter four. Just so y'all see, this is Genesis chapter four. Uh, we know the whole uh, account of what happened with uh, Cain and Abel and that particular experience. And then right after uh, this record of the account of what happened with Cain and Abel, um, if you scroll down here uh, to verse 17, it begins to give a genealogy of, uh, of the generations that came after, <clears throat> after Cain. Uh, and I'm going to start reading uh, at verse 17 and then we're going to see something that's pretty fascinating. It says, um, and Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch. And he built a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son, Enoch. Verse 18. And unto Enoch was born uh, Ired, and Ired begat uh, Mahujael, and Mahujael begat Methusiel. And Methuselah begot Lamech. And verse 19 says, And Lamech took unto him two wives. The name of the one was Ada, and the name of the other, Zillah. Now, verse 20, it says, And, and, and Abda bore Jibel. He was the father of such as dwell in tents, and of such as have cattle. And verse 21 says, And his brother's name was Jubal. 
He was the father of all such as handled the harp and organ. So I'm going to say it again, family. Verse 21. And his brother's name was Jubal. He was the father of such as handle the harp and organ. And so when you look at this name, Jubal, and you look it up in the Hebrew, I'm going to put it up here for you all to see. Can you all see, see my screen just fine? Yes. Okay. And I'm using uh, just a blue, lot, a blue letter Bible concordance, uh, which breaks down these terms in the Hebrew so we can look at the function. And as you can see here, and uh, Brett said, I would love to hear your thoughts on this as well. Jubal, which uh, the biblical usage, uh, this particular concordance says that it refers to a string, which I think is interesting because, so let me get back to, because what do we see, like when you see music written, doesn't it look like a string? Mm -hmm. Doesn't it look like it flows like a string, which I, which I just thought, I'm not seeing there's a correlation, but I just thought that was interesting. But it says here, the son of Lamech and Adda and the inventor of musical instruments. Now, when you start looking at and breaking down the name Jubal in the Hebrew, and let's, and, and let's, let's do that just for, uh, just for uh, biblical exercise here. So we have the Yod. And for those that are not familiar, the, the wa or the vav, this is usually a holder that, that puts two particular concepts together within a word. So we see here that the yod, we see the bait, and we see the lamic. Okay, the yod, the bait, and the lamic. Now the yod is a biblical picture of a hand. Okay, well, this is this is fascinating. <laughs> when I saw this. Russ said this was absolutely fascinating. I would love to hear the thoughts of the people on this as well. Because the word says, this man was the father of musical instrumentation. It says the first letter in the name uh, Yobel or Yubel is the Yod, which signifies a, a hand. Okay. Then the bait, which signifies a house or a family. Okay, that's what the second Hebrew letter represents. And then the lament, which we know represents the shepherd's staff. Okay, the shepherd's staff. So when you put that together, again, functioning from right to left as we read Hebrew. So we see that when it comes to the origin of music, we need to look and, and, and inspect and ask the spirit for discernment on what the hand or what the work because a hand represents work. It also is needed in instrumentation. Most, most instruments have to be in some way to perform, um, uh, utilized with the hand. But the hand or the work of that particular individual is important. And it says that also the house, because that hand is, is, is being utilized to lead or, or move or influence a house or a, a group of people. And then it's a shepherd staff. And a shepherd staff is used to what? Is used to drive, is used to direct, is used to guide, is even used to correct. So the hand of the house that is guiding. So we need to pay very close attention to the hand or the work of those that are crafting or creating music. We need to look at the house. We need to look at how that particular person or the, the culture in which that particular house is functioning under and that particular individual is leading. And I'm not just talking about a house as it pertains to a family. I'm talking about any space where an authority has been given, that person has been given authority to move and to shift and shape the culture. And we need to pay very close attention to where that particular instrumentation or music is driving or guiding those that are under that influence. And what I'm reminded of is I'm reminded of David, right? So David was anointed to be the king in humbly. Now think about this, and this is incredible. You know, we all know this account. David was charged, even though he was anointed to be the next king of Israel, he was still charged because of his musical gift to go and minister to the king to Saul, 
humbly, even though he knew he was the next in rifle king because Saul had lost his uh, his anointing because of his disobedience. But he was, but his spirit, the work of his hand, David being a shepherd, David being one that that was um, that was not about accolades. He was he was about doing the work that was necessary to take care of his household, take care of his family. And, and he was able to drive and guide out beast and things like that to protect the sheep. But David was, was still came humbly before the king and, and obeyed the king's order. And I think about that humility in, in those that are making music or engineering music these days. Are they moving in that same spirit? Because it's important. It's really, really important that we understand that. So. So this was something that I found, and I pray this is uh, this is in, enlightening to those. Do your own research on 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 this particular uh, Hebrew term. And for those of you that want to do further study into this, is Strong's number thirty one oh six. So if you are uh, looking this up in the Strong, it's thirty one oh six. So are we ready to bring up our our guests? Oh well, well, sure. Come on, come on, come on. Absolutely. Brother Matayahu, Shabbat Shalom, brother. Shabbat Shalom. <clears throat> Good to see you, family. Talk to us. Likewise, man. That was a, you was talking about rewinding what Brother Says said, as you should have. That was, you got to, you can run that back one more time. Okay, that was <laughs> that was good, man. That was some, uh, very, I, I like that a lot. Um, dang, you get the nail on the head pretty much. I mean, uh, there's, there's really, you could drop the mic. I don't really have nothing to say now, honestly. Uh, other than I could just give my testimony in terms of like discerning music, uh, because um, I kind of went through a phase uh, around the COVID time where uh, the Most High kind of really reached out and you know let me know, hey, essentially, hey, you, the way you live, and you, you're going to hell. That's what changed my life. Is uh, I had a revelation that hey, you know, the way you live, and you're going to hell. Uh, so one of the first things that I cut out was the music because I started listening to the lyrics and I was like, well, wait a second. I don't agree with what this person is saying. Mm -hmm. um, he's saying some, he's going to murder this and I, he's doing this with somebody's wife. And I'm like, I don't want nobody to do that with my wife. I'd hate for my brother to get murdered. So I stopped listening to that. That was, it was easy to stop listening. Um, but it was hard to find um, music that was, you know that had that, that had that spirit of y'all on it it was very difficult um and as i kept searching i went from rap music uh to r b music thinking like oh you know well it's r b it's more chill it's all good and then i kept listening to that and i was like dang this is this is still wicked so i had to cut out the r b then i tried to go old school and i was like sure you know old school surely you know this is you know brick house you know what that's fine <laughs> And I uh, found out, surely enough, uh, that was wicked too. So I had to cut that off. And then I just went to a point in time where I was just listening to sermons. I would just, I would just listen to uh, brothers preach, you know, uh, the word of God, uh, and or nothing. I would listen to nothing or brothers preach um, until I came to the Most High. Rather, led me uh, this. I guess sort of when this Hebrew journey started, like discovering who I was. Uh, he led me to some Hebrew music, a guy called Lorvins. Um, and ever since then, and I could tell the difference because, <clears throat> like you just said, the hand that was driving it, his character, I think, uh, Sister V, or I'm not sure if it was a sister or brother, but uh, V kind of hit it spot on the character, and then obviously you just did also. Uh, the character was a big big deal to me you know he was teaching me uh in his music you know about the most high and about uh you know uh observance of the torah and you know uh who he was and uh it really resonated with the spirit that was already driving me. Uh, so i knew that it was authentic based on the way that i was living was in a court it lined up it helped me to continue to live the way that I was living or strive to live the way that I was living. Um, and that, that I think that's kind of what it, uh, how you'll understand whether it's from most high spirit will 
I mean, it'll pretty much tell you. It won't. It's not an audible voice. It's like, hey, yeah, this is my music. But you pretty much uh, will. It's a nudge um, in your heart where you know, okay, yeah, this is. You know, this is an acceptable offering. This is an acceptable uh, fragrance that's being lifted up to the Most High. Um, and I think that's just kind of how you can. It's just a spirit-led thing, like you said. You just know based on, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit will just tell you, "Hey, you know, this is this is of me." Um, and then you're able to discern, you know, what's not of Yah very easily once you start actually, you know, studying the scriptures and you know, uh, understanding his precepts, um, understanding, you know, how he operates is very easy to, uh, you know, see what's acceptable to him and what's not. All right. Thank you, brother. That was an uh, interesting uh, testimony that you just gave us. We do have another question. I don't know if it's one to, to answer or prepared to answer, should I say, but I'm going to put it up. <clears throat> oh that's uh that's definitely something that's interesting uh i think i i know what brother bitter herbs is referring to um in the king james version some of the old english spelling uh i'd have to look into it a little bit further what i what i found in if you can give us a, a particular verse uh that would be uh, helpful because the term music is not used in many translations, particularly the KJB. I don't think it's anywhere mentioned in the in, in, in the Tanakh, the term music, the English word music. Now there's references to instrumentation um, and things like that, but but can you can you share a particular verse, uh, Brother Bitter Herbs? That would be helpful. And then uh, also, Brother said, if you have any comments or responses to our brother. Matayahu or anything else that's that's been brought forth, please feel free to share. You know, I, I love the testimony that you gave because um, you know it's a real it's a real life application, right? Of, of really listening into music, really listening to the messages, and really finding what um, finding what helps you. You know, what 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 grows you closer to God, and what uh, causes you. It's 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 like medicine sometimes, you know. Um, you can try different medicine. Either the medicine works for an ailment or it doesn't. Um, and um, some some work better than others. Some medicine has a, a more sustained effect. And um, so music can certainly be that, you know, music that whenever you want to feel closer to God, uh, closer to the most high, you put that, you know, you put that music on and you find you find what that music is for you. You know, you find what those messages are for you, and uh, so it's a it's a real world application, and not everybody is as cognizant of that. Like sometimes, you know, if we're experiencing, um, if we're having cold or or, or congestion, indigestion, if we're having um, specifically congestion um, and cold symptoms, sometimes it's not because of the germ; it's because of something that we ate. You know. And it takes maturity saying that, oh, man, this germ's got me feeling that way. No, that that cheese got you feeling that way because that's what happens whenever you eat. <laughs> you know, if you pay attention when you eat cheese, you feel this way and so on. So it's finding what's specifically going to help you uh, to move closer to, uh, to, to the most high. And so but you have to be you have to pay attention to that area. Not everybody's paying attention to food as medicine, you know, uh, which is the original attention of medicine. Some people are just saying, nope, if I feel bad, I need to take these drugs, X, Y, Z. So music that you listen to can very much can very much be what what affects uh what affects you, makes you feel a certain way. And what you said about uh Yubo, Jubo, oh my gosh, that was some of the greatest teaching ever. Um, even to understand um how uh Hebrews read from the right to the left and to I'd never had I've never heard uh I heard it broken down that way. That's so important because if you are in charge of the instruments, you do have the staff, and that staff is hurting people essentially and and and, and dominant uh, it, it's it's guiding people. That staff is guiding people in a certain direction, and that is the original intention of music 
everywhere. Uh, and when I think of that term, Jubal, I'm thinking of a uh, Jubilee. Um, and um, it's my goodness, if we, I mean, God, God is uh, giving us the tools. If only we learn to use them, you know, he's given, he's given us the most high has given us the mysteries. If only we take the time to, to find them and, and utilize them. So that's Amen. wonderful. Wonderful testimony, wonderful ex explanation. So just Amen. blessed, extremely blessed, blessed by that. Thank you. I'll praise to the most high. Uh, Brother Mati Ahu, we had a uh, we had someone ask if you could give the name of that artist again that uh, that, that that you mentioned, like the Hebrew uh, musical artist. Uh, yeah, his name is Lorvins, L O R V I N S. Uh, okay. And then once you once you uh, you know go to him, it'll different artists branch from him that are. Uh, also very good artists like Hezekiah is another one, but Lorvins is the one that definitely uh, started the journey. He has a range of music. Uh, and then uh, real real quick, do I have a sec real quick? Just of course, go ahead, brother. Had, uh, that, that spelling again was L-O-R-V-I-N-S? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, I'm just uh, putting it in the chat for those that may want it. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, great music. Uh, I think it was earlier, a few minutes, uh, not a few minutes, but uh, sometime earlier, y'all saying uh, somebody asked about artists that uh, like some names or some people that, you know, uh, will throw you off or uh, I guess are just a little bit off. And I had some names immediately that came to mind because I also tried the uh, the Christian gospel genre also. I also tried that. Uh, so the Kirk, because we all grew up, most of us grew up on that, like Kirk Franklin's and people like that. Uh, so uh, Kirk Franklin, that's the name. Uh, Tasha Cobbs, um, Hillsong. Uh, a lot of these really, honestly, uh, pretty much every mainstream gospel artist I tried. <clears throat> and it's not that the music wasn't, uh, it sounded good, but the anointing. Um, I didn't feel the same power on the music. Um, in, in, in fact, as I was listening to it, it led me to look into them. It led me to actually look into who they were as a, as a person. Um, and so, yeah, I listened to the music. Then I started looking into, you know, these people that I never looked into because I never looked into Kirk Franklin. I was just trying to stomp in church, you know, trying to uh, get my praise dance on. <laughs> so I never looked into him. Um, then I looked into him. I was like, man, this isn't, I can't trust this guy. You know what I mean? I don't I don't know if he's uh, a real brethren or not by some of the stuff that he says and the way he lives his life. And, you know, the way he uh, well, obviously, I don't know how he lives his life, but the way that he, it, his image is off. Um, and a lot of those 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 gospel singers, I would say I would say 90 percent of them, man, are, are uh, and that's a generalization. But most of them are pretty. Pretty off, man. Uh, and I tried all of them, Yolanda Adams, and I love me some Yolanda Adams and, and she, beautiful voice. Uh, all of these people, man, they're kind of they, they they don't have the uh, anointing on the, on the music and their lifestyle, the way that they live uh, is not a. It didn't it didn't sit right in my spirit, you know. It, it like I said, it led me to look into them. Um, and so that, that's some, those are just a few names, Kirk Franklin, Tasha Cobbs. A lot of people listen to these people, though, um, you know, Hillsong, thinking that, you know, uh, <clears throat> they're, you know, being led by the spirit um, or having spirit filled worship. But um, it's kind of like a fake, really, like it's a uh, not authentic feel. It's not an authentic. Uh, yeah, it's not a Yah spirit. It's not a spirit of Yah. Thank you, brother. Really appreciate it. I, I know that we're um, we're getting towards the end of the stream today, but I wanted to share something also with the people um, and not necessarily to get into a deep dive, but uh, just kind of get some initial reactions from from you, brother Cedric, um, being our guest here today, uh, our special guest. Uh, so think about this, family. Um, think about going back to Sinai. Because I know the name of the stream uh, today you might have seen was from Sinai to present day. So 
Do you recall what happened at Sinai um, when Moses uh, and Joshua uh, went up onto the mountain to receive um, the uh, the tablets, uh, the Torah? And do you recall what happened down in the camp and how it was described? And this is interesting when I think about this. Um, I'm going to just really quickly share. And again, we don't have time for a deep study into this uh, right now. And I also want to thank you all because there's a lot of really good things. Uh, Brother said in the, in, in the chat, people are, uh, are bringing up different artists and, and sharing different artists that people might want to look into. At the end of the day, one thing that we say here at 2444 Ready Ministries is we tell you to test the spirits and hold fast to that which is true. Just test. Test the spirits. If you have questions, test them. You, you have a responsibility. We have a responsibility to test every spirit. And so uh, as you do your research, test the spirits, pray on these matters, and let the Ruach uh, guide you into the truth and uh, how you function, how you operate. Uh, but really quick, Exodus 32, and I just want to go there really quickly. I want to share something with you, which I think, again, is, is a bit fascinating. I'd love to hear your comments here and then bro said if you have any final comments we'll get ready to wrap up this particular stream today y'all willing this is exodus 32 um this is when obviously moses and, and uh and joshua were on the mountain and they heard a noise in the camp watch this it says and moses turned and went down from the mount and the two tablets of the testimony were in his hand the tablets were written on both their sides and the one side and on the other were they written. Verse 16, and the tablets were the work of the Most High. And the writing was the writing of the Most High, graven upon the tablets. And when Yahshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted, he said unto Moses, there is a noise of war in the camp. And he said, it is not the voice of them that shout for mastery, neither, neither is it the voice of them that cry for being overcome, but the noise of them that sing do I hear. Now, I wonder, and this is just, and this is just, and again, I love to hear your thought on this, brother said, uh, I wonder, because they were coming out of Egyptian culture, I wonder, was this a noise that was Egyptian in its influence? Because it was a familiar, it, it was a familiar sound to Moses. Joshua thought it was a war sound. It was some sort of war cry that, that was going on. But he said, "No, Moses, said, this is the voice of of singing, of jubilation, and those type of things." So I, I I wonder if this music was Hebraic in its function, or was it Egyptian in its function, right? Because they obviously had had crafted a golden image. Right, which obviously we know is not of the most high. They obviously received the likeness of this from the Egyptians. But it, it's just interesting to think that even at Sinai, even at Sinai, there had to be discerning of, mm -hmm. of, of spirits because spirits were leading people away from the will of the most high. And, and, and this is something too, we gotta be very careful of what music we listen, we listen to or engage in when we're vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Let's say that again. We got to be very careful what we listen to and what we engage and allow to come into our soul gates when we're vulnerable. See the see the Israelites were vulnerable. They had gotten impatient. They were they, they were ready for to to to, to experience what the Most High was going to bring. They were getting impatient, and so they began to craft their own atmosphere. And music was a part of that atmosphere. So just something to, to think on. I don't know if you have just an initial comment on that before we get ready to close. Please read it for yourself. Um, uh, ask the Spirit to give you discernment on that. But just thought that was interesting also as we uh, talk about this, this whole uh, evolution of worship music in this. Okay, he's having technical difficulty. Um, we'll wait on him to come back. Um, there was a comment about that spelling of music or music um i uh then there was a scripture mentioned in the text somewhere along the way was um first samuel 18 and 6 um i guess i need to know the the version because i looked it up uh under the king james um 
version that we use, the AAV, which includes the Apocrypha, and it's spelled like we normally spell it, music. So I'm not sure uh, what version of the Bible that that spelling is showing up. So we, we never did get that uh, answer for you all. Um, but um, uh, said, did you have any, any closing remark in reference to what uh, Kenneth was just talking about before we close out? Oh, absolutely. You know, um, I, I just love, you know, I broke down how, um, you know, even so early, there was a, a, an importance of discerning um, what identity matters. Oh, uh, I, I just love how you said it. Even so early on, there was a there was an importance of discerning uh, where the music come from and came from and what it meant. And he said that you have to be careful of music that's uh, fam- was that music that was familiar to them. And I also thought uh, is that music that was tied to an experience, right? Experiential. We got to be especially careful as black people, in my opinion, because um, our experience here in the United States, um, you know, stems so many ways and is still influenced by those 400 years of oppression. <clears throat> so what what music do oppressed people uh, rely on? It's not always music of empowerment. It's music of talking about that impression and it's music of maybe finding ways to to um, pacify or music uh, of finding ways to uh, to self-medicate through oppression. And it's music that expresses that frustration. And those aren't things that that speak of like the power and the love of the most high. Um, so we have to work harder to to, to constantly make sure that we're feeding our spirit in the direction of the most high. Uh, and we have to guard um, what we listen to and what we ingest musically in order to do that. And it's no, it's not an easy task because, you know, we were born into struggle in the United States and into that oppression in the United States, even the music that we were given initially uh, in churches, it wasn't, it wasn't music, praising God, it was music saying, oh, it was music oppressing people saying, hey, don't, you know, don't do y'all sit still, don't do anything until you're told, don't question God, don't, you know, a lot of that music stemmed from the slave Bible that we were given initially. So we have to be careful about what's familiar or familial, and we have to be careful about what's even experiential. And uh, we have to press toward that higher mark and that higher calling. And part of that is uh, controlling or discerning, better discerning the music, you know, that we listen to uh, as a people and as individuals and as a people and the music that we perpetuate and support. So I'm, I'm just really blessed by the, all the messages uh, uh, that you all shared this morning. I learned so much just and just participating uh, in these two weeks. So I'm just, just blessed to be connected to you all. And again, we do thank you uh, for coming up and sharing with us again to, uh, this week. Uh, you have truly been a blessing to this phase of our study. Uh, we welcome you, as we said before we came on, you're welcome to come back at any time. Um, again, I want to respond. We, we're giving some some scripture in the text. I think it's in reference to uh, that spelling. But uh, again, we have to have the version because obviously it's a version of the bible that 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 spelling is showing up in so i'm not sure what version that is because i've looked up every scripture that's been mentioned so far and i don't see the version and nobody's giving me the version that they're that they're getting that from um thank you all for being with us again today uh, my son is having some technical difficulty but uh, we're at the end and we're about to close out do want to uh, ask you all to continue to be in in prayer for our children's ministry um it's coming along very very well um they are just i mean those children that we've shared with y'all from the beginning they're very excited uh we have a website um that they're um that we just uh, put up for them <clears throat> which will um i don't have the exact um uh, spelling of the website right at this moment but we will have that for you in the future in case you want to go there and look uh we'll try to have that maybe next week and I uh, do want to thank all of you that have been, been participating in the um, in the chat. We've had some great, great and wonderful uh, comments in reference to our topic today. And we want to thank you and uh, ask you just to continue to pray for us as we move forward. 
Uh, bless each and every one of you. I'm not sure if my son's going to make it back, but we'll go ahead and close out with prayer. Uh, and uh, they're thanking you in the chat as well, Brother Cedric, and uh, we really did appreciate you being with us today. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you, Heavenly Father, uh, for leading us and guiding us. We thank you for your Ruach, oh, Father God, that is, oh, Father God, filling our spirit, giving us discernment, oh, Father, on how to go about uh, uh, making sure that we're in the right spirit, listen to the right type of music. We thank you for the testimony that was given here today by our brother that came on and shared his experience of going through the different genres. And um, and ultimately, uh, when you're um, when you when you're discerning, you have to search, you have to test, and 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 that's exactly what he did, and he found his space. And we thank you uh, for that testimony. Maybe that would be a blessing blessing to those that that are listening and are seeking the same uh, concern. Concerns. We thank you for each and every person that is uh, here with us today live. We thank you for each and every person that will come on demand. And we pray and ask the Father God that you will continue to anoint us, O oh, Father God, to be the be the people uh, leading in the kingdom as you uh, as you are giving us uh, the power uh, to do so. We thank you for these another blessing. We ask all these in the name of Yeshua. We pray. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Bless you all. Have a wonderful week. Shabbat Shalom to everyone. Um, uh, again, my, my my son must have had some more technical problem. We'll try to get figure that out, um, and uh, hopefully we won't have that problem uh, going forward. But uh, something going on with the uh, with his internet uh, at his home, and we will see if we can get that addressed. Thank you all. Bless you. Have a wonderful week. Shabbat shalom. Much love to all of you. Shabbat shalom.